Hello my friends, how are you doing? So I asked you if you want to see more opinion videos from me and half of you said no. Let's be honest here, who doesn't like opinions? Everybody likes opinions. So today we are going to talk about what kind of cool features should be added to future Affinity Photo updates. Let me know in the comments what you think or maybe if I missed something. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. Let's get started. So here's my first point and those are in no specific order and that is to be able to save a adjustment collections. As you know right now you can turn an adjustment layer into a preset but only an individual adjustment layer. So if you could for example combine them in a group and then save that as a group of adjustment layers you could apply all these adjustments in a batch process to a ton of photos and that would make Affinity Photo so much more effective and so much quicker. The next point is larger asset previews. We have an asset manager, it's kind of cool, but we have these tiny teeny previews that don't show us kind of nothing basically. So I want to have a large asset preview manager and also enable me to zoom into these assets and also toggle the background color of the assets because for example, if I have a dark and transparent asset presented to me on a dark background. I'm not seeing anything. This is not helpful. Here is the next point and that is endless masks. You might know that right now if you select an object and then apply a mask so you only see that object that the mask is ending at the borders of the canvas. And that means every time you move that object and the mask with it, the borders will show again and you have to fix the mask every single time you move it, especially if you work a lot with complex compositions and want to move around objects a lot, right? The next one is one where I think most of you are going to agree with me and that is to have LUT previews again because they added the feature where you can have importing LUTs, a lot of them, but now it's just a name list. So I have to click through them that's not really helpful. We need live previews for LUTs because then we can just choose the one we need and don't have to experiment clicking through hundreds of LUTs, right? Okay, let's go to the next one and that is to be able to rotate images in a 3D space. Well, what do I mean by that? So uh, we do have a perspective adjustment right now where when you click on an image you have these four points and you have to then fiddle around until it looks like they are in the right perspective and to be able to do this in a correct way, you basically have to be a master of perspective and drawing and most people are not like that. So to be able to just have that plane and then rotate it in a 3D space and move it in a 3D space would make that process so much easier. So that would be a really cool addition. Let's go to the next point and that is a composition overlay. That would be a specific layer, like for example the, the fill layer right now, but what it would do is to show a grid over my image permanently that shows me different things, for example the golden rule, the rule of thirds, stuff like that with different lines, like we have right now when we use the crop tool, but the problem is the crop tool is only visible when I use the crop tool. I want to have these lines and grids overlaid over my image while I'm working on the composition to give me a guideline on how I want to make it look and be more artistic with that, right? Here's the next one and that's about color sliders. So there's a lot of different ways to adjust colors in Affinity Photo, but what I'm really missing is these kind of sliders that you find in software like Photoshop, Lightroom, Luminar, where you can balance a color between two different settings. So for example, in Lightroom, you can make blue more blue or you can make it more teal. And then you can also make orange colors more red or more orange. And this will help you by just moving two sliders to create a really nice and cool orange teal look. You can do it in Affinity Photo, but you really have to know where to look, what to do. It's pretty complex. And these sliders are made to make these processes so much easier for everybody. Here's the next one. And that is a lot of people, I think you and me, both 
work with high resolution images, but a lot of the sliders and effects and filters in Affinity Photo have the highest setting of the sliders at a very low limit. So sometimes you can add a number by hand on your keyboard and then it will go further than the maximum value of the slider. But then if you have done that, you can't touch the slider anymore or it will jump back to the maximum value. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think you want that. I think I want that. I know I want that. And that is actual water reflections. I can remember when this was an effect like 20 years ago when software like, for example, even for video, the QuickTime player could do that. And Java could do that for websites like decades ago. And Affinity Photo can't do that. There is no realistic water reflection effect. And that is really, really needed, for example, for sky replacement or other effects where you want to pose a person inside of a water a surface. I need to have a way to make a nice reflection that has this kind of water surface in it, right? So that is something that's super important. Let's go to the next one. GIFs and animations. Does that ring a bell? Yes. I want to see the ability to apply GIF animations to pictures and also to create my own GIFs, which also means to have a little bit of a timeline inside of Affinity Photo because moving images is just like super important in the age and time we live in. Like static images, really cool, but to have the ability to create a little small GIF loop that is just very important and very necessary for photo editing software today. At least I think so, because I really like GIFs. Okay, here are three points that I have combined together into one point, And these are the things I think that need dearly, dearly to be reworked in Affinity Photo. The first one is the develop persona, which I don't like, I don't use it as very basic. It needs just a lot of more features uh, to it to be really effective. So. It needs a complete overhaul. The other one is the macro recorder, which is an absolute hell. If you have ever used that, it's basically useless right now in what it can do. So it needs to be able to record almost anything that you're doing in Affinity Photo. And then please also allow us to export these macros so they work on the different devices. This is really important. If I export a macro, does it also work on iPad, on Mac because of the different shortcut stuff like that? That's really important to make that happen. And another thing is we have this lighting effect that is kind of having, uh, helping us creating a digital light uh, from one source. And it looks really not good and it's very limited in its abilities. So that should be reworked too. Okay, let's go to some other points here. This might be a bit specific, but if you know then when you place an image inside of a document in Affinity Photo, it says in brackets image. And these image layers, they can do pretty amazing things, especially when it comes to the blend ranges. But as soon as you rasterize, these things don't work anymore. So please allow us to turn a raster where it says in brackets pixel layer back into an image layer so I have access to these cool features again. And here's another thing that is connected to that. If I place an image inside of a document in Affinity Photo on a canvas, please tell me or show me what the actual real size is relative to the canvas. So I know if I go over the size that the original image has or if I'm lower than that size, because right now there is no indicator and you really don't know if you're getting pixelated or not. It's kind of hard to tell right now. And here's the last one that I want to suggest. And this I think would be super helpful. That is gradients that actually follow the shape of the object. So for example, if you make a wavy line or a wavy object, you can have the gradient also be wavy along that outline of that shape or object. And that would make gradients amazingly useful. So these are my suggestions. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed something. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you in my next tutorial. Bye.